So with some background here, inside of the control hub, there's two different things you can see. There's the analytics page and there's a diagnostic slash troubleshooting page. The analytics page basically is used for your historical view of what's happening across the platform itself. These charts are typically updated around 24 hours and they give you a longer term view of what's going on. And in the troubleshooting and diagnostic pages, these are basically almost real time diagnostics. You can look at the participants in a meeting and get information about their quality that they're having and also how they're connected and which devices they're using. And then if you can go into more detail about a specific meeting, you can look at the audio, the video, the sharing details of any particular person. And then you can look at the details of those in a sense of what is the packet loss, the jitter, the latency, the utilization on the CPU, what type of device they're using, things like that in the participant detail when you click on them specifically. And then one of the other things I want to also highlight is in the right hand side under media node type you can also see from a video mesh perspective which video mesh node they are utilized in this particular meeting. So I've logged into control hub. I've clicked on troubleshooting tab on the left hand side and in the search bar I put in my email address for this particular test environment and a time range and hit enter. As you can see it came up with two different conferences that have actually happened in the past. You have the first one here that's 21 minutes long five different participants and another test conference for 18 seconds. So let's click on this one here just to highlight a couple things. Now first off you can see there's multiple different participants in the meeting. I had a PSDN call-in user, um, I had a Mac user coming into it, I had a device coming in, I had a iPhone on the WebEx meetings client come into the meeting, and also I had a WebEx board come into the meeting. Now we can look at audio details, we can look at video details, we can look at sharing if anything was happening in this meeting. Which, and then also you can look at the specifics of all those details in a chart form as I go across this. Here you can see many different things about the individual participants. Now what I want to specifically highlight here is if I go let's say on the WebEx board for example. You can see I'm on a WebEx board right here. Well, what I want to highlight here is the media node type that we talked about right here. Web media node type VMS colon Boxboro 2 full. So that's one of my clusters that I have configured that I know the WebEx board utilized in this particular meeting when I was communicating with everybody. Now you can scroll down and look at all different types of things on any of the participants, the audio specific, the video specific details, and also the sharing specific details. Same thing here. Latency, packet loss, jitter, bit rate, all the common things you'd want to see in, when troubleshooting into a meeting. Now, if I go into the analytics tab, which is the one right here, I can see a few different things also that are not specific, but more historical about the different meetings going on around my video mesh node clusters themselves. So over here, I've cho chose a 30-day view of things. And you can see I have engagements, resources, and bandwidth utilization in the sense of cascade bandwidth utilization. So right now, this is not a heavily utilized environment at all. You can see that there's barely any traffic going across here over the last 30 days because it is a test environment we don't use too much. You can see we here we have multiple different clients that connected, and I can look at a circle diagram of what they are, and most all of them are our video endpoints, fewer WebEx teams on iPad, fewer WebEx teams on the browser version. And you see the same thing here, and I could click on any one of those and actually see the individual participants in a sense of what's related to it. And then I have meeting details here, which obviously we don't have many meetings, so there's not a whole lot going on from resource utilization. So if we click on the resources tab, what you'll see here is the ability to look at the individual nodes themselves and see what their capabilities are in a sense of, are they available for anybody to utilize them when a meeting happens? Now in my particular case, I have three different clusters that were configured over those last 30 days. And each one of those clusters has 100% availability. So they've been up and available for any calls that go through. Now if I scroll down a little more, you'll see I can look at this individual node as a whole, or I could actually specifically say, okay, I want to actually do just, let's say, this one here. Box row two, is this one fully up? So maybe I can look at the individual nodes inside of it and see, okay, this cluster wasn't up all the time. Oh, I took one of the nodes out of service. 
Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, there's not a whole lot of data on here, um, specifically because this is a test environment, but I want to point out a couple different things. You can see here, overflow to the cloud. So this is important to you, and also what call redirects are. So let's go ahead and look at the slide version of this so we can see more specific details about them. But what I want to highlight here is on the left-hand side, we have a graph. The right-hand side, we're going to have a chart with details for each one of those. So let's see some with some data on it. So here we are looking at the same overflow to the cloud details. Now this one has, you can see here, 470 overflows to the cloud in this particular time frame. On the right hand side, you have overflow to cloud details. Now specifically what these details say, and the reason for the overflow is video mesh exceeded its capacity. If this happens frequently, consider adding more nodes to your cluster. So in this particular case, I had 10 overflows at this one particular point in time at 10 a.m. So we've reached capacity in a video mesh. We're now starting to send participants over. And if I start to see this trend happening like I have here, most likely I have a capacity issue in this one particular cluster and need to add more nodes to it. Now, there, the, the one below that said call redirect. So it was a similar diagram inside of the control hub, the way it's set up, basically the graph on the left and the details on the right. Now, in this example here, we have multiple different clusters. So it's a different environment. But on the right hand side here, it has multiple different redirects. And this could be another indication of where base, the internal clusters are redirecting the call from my capacity to another node, another cluster in a different node, for example, because I cannot reach it. So in this example here, Bangalore has the count of two. So it's saying, okay, there was two redirects. So the Bangalore cluster was full. I'm redirecting it over to, let's say, RTP or some other cluster in the network to try to handle this. And the reason we give is because the video mesh has exceeded its capacity. So in other words, we've reached capacity. We know there's other resources in the network. We're going to try to use those on-premise devices before sending them out to the cloud. So both of these are good indication of that you're reaching some kind of capacity limits on your video mesh node, either during peak hours or because you've got more utilization of video. And it's something that you should look at as an admin to think about, okay, now it is time to start adding more devices in the sense of video mesh nodes so I can handle more devices on the network. Now the last one here is bandwidth usage. This has to, to do with specifically around the cascade bandwidth between the video mesh cluster and also the WebEx cloud itself. Now you can see that I have three different clusters here. I've had very minimal amount of cascade bandwidth that goes across here. And I'll show you some more graphs with some information so we can see what it looks like in a live environment where there's a lot of traffic going on. In addition to that, we have cascade bandwidth here from a transmit and receive perspective, and then cascade bandwidth based upon the streams, in other words, audio, video, and content. So in this slide here, you can see that we have multiple different cascades going on for different amounts of clusters. So I've highlighted here one particular peak point on this particular graph in a live environment. So RTP, or Raleigh, area has 238 megabits of traffic being used for cascades right now in this particular point in time. So in other words, this is a bandwidth utilized for the entire cluster for cascades at one point. Now, if I want to look specifically into transmit and receive, how much is transmit, how much is receive, it should be, as you can see here, it's fairly close to each other on the left-hand side. I can also break this out to say how much is this video, which I expect to be most of it, right? In this particular case, it's 451 megs at this particular point. And how much is it audio and how much is it sharing? So those graphs can actually give you an idea of what's going on in the actual cascade from a bandwidth perspective and the streams themselves.